Hello guys, this is Orange, and today I'm going to talk about my first impressions from Knights of the Frozen Throne. So I think that uh, Knights of the Frozen Throne will affect the meta quite a lot. Uh, it will probably not affect the meta as much as Ongoro did, considering that Ongoro came together with uh, a huge rotation as well. So not only did we see new cards, but also a lot of the older cards taken away from us. But still, uh, Knights of the Frozen Throne seems like a very impactful set, and I think that it will spawn a lot of new archetypes. At the end of Angoro, we saw a lot of control and slower decks. Agar was not exactly dead, but deader than it has been at any point earlier in a meta. What Knights of the Frozen Throne seems to add is a lot of cards that actually punish aggro, like uh, Spreading Plague, and even the good aggro cards, like Bone Mare, that wants you to play a lot of minions, are also really good against these hyper-aggressive decks. So I don't think that we'll see that fast of a meta, but a more slower mid-range control meta. We've seen, so far, after a few days of the new expansion, we've seen a few new archetypes, or rather some old ones that are coming back. A mid range Druid was very popular, Colento posted a list the first few days, but uh, now from the trend I've been seeing lately is that people are actually going back to J Druid. Both of, both of these archetypes are fueled by the new card Ultimate Infestation. Uh, then we've also seen people trying to make uh, Warlock do a comeback with the new Blood Reaver Gul'dan and Demons. The backbone of that deck, or the new card that really is the glue that keeps it together, would then be the file, uh, a super powerful sweeper against the aggro decks. So now you have more consistent consistency with both the file and Hellfire. So I think one of the most overlooked cards in the expansion so far, or at least the card I haven't seen that many people talk about, is the Cyronite Chain Gang. The card used as a natural home in Evolve Shaman, which was one of the stronger decks uh, pre-expansion, uh, pre and also it synergized well with the hand buffs from Paladin that also got new cards like Rightus Protector and the, together with Grimes Titan for uh, Outfitter and Smuggler's Run that can help make the, that archetype stronger and Saronite Chain Gang uh, fits perfectly into that archetype. So that's one of the cards that I think might, have, might see some more play as the expansion goes. And underrated cards in the beginning of the expansions are Spreading Plague and Bone Mare, but people picked up on, the, on them very quickly. I think the most overrated card that the community just went totally nuts about and that they haven't seen people have that, that much access with or myself either, is uh, Udra of the Ebon Blade. People were saying that uh, while the 5 free lifesteal weapon is obviously super powerful, the hero power is not that much different from, say, upgrading it just to go true heart, and with this card you do it for 3 mana more, which is quite a lot when you make the jump from 6 to 9. And also the 5 free weapon has to compete together with uh, Tyrion, just meaning that going Tyrion into Udra of the Ebon Blade is not that efficient because you will never really get use of all those weapon charges. That's the card that I think is the most overrated of the expansion so far, at least. All right, so my favorite design of the entire set is probably Righteous Protector. Now a lot of you will think that that card doesn't do a whole lot. It's a very innocent looking card, so to speak. It's not a flash effect like Ultimate Infestation or one of the Death Knights. What I like so so much about it is that it's a, it's a cheap card that fits into so many archetypes and also makes so many old cards more playable only because they printed this efficient small minion. For example, this is exactly the type of card that Smuggler's Run, Grimesteed Outfitter and the small time recruits needed to possibly spawn a super aggressive Paladin deck. It also just fits into mid-range Paladin by pairing it with Blessing of Kings and uh, Spike Ridge Deed. Other than that, we also have the new Divine Shield theme, which, this, which uh, Blizzard has pushed quite a lot with Bolivar and the 2-2 that draws a Divine Shield minion. 
Yes, the card does a whole lot of things without really doing a whole lot itself, which uh, I think is pretty great design of a card. I like that Blizzard has uh, introduced lifesteal to the game. Almost any TCG that's uh, remotely popular has lifesteal as a thing in their card game. What I think about lifesteal in Hearthstone in particular is that Hearthstone is a more temp-oriented game more than any other TCG I've ever played at least, which makes uh, lifesteal, if it's not on a decent statted minion already, it's not that powerful. And I think that Blizzard might have been a little bit too careful about the power level on their lifesteal cards. So in the future, I hope that they will push the mechanic a little bit more, but I'm happy to see it in the game. If I could move one card to the Hall of Fame, it would be the card Ice Block. Blizzard has already tried to uh, destroy Freeze Mage by moving Ice Lance to the Hall of Fame, but it turns out that Ice Block is the real issue. Ice Block as a card just leads to a lot of non-interactivity, which is kind of bad for the game. And while Frostnov and Blizzard also plays part in this, I think that Ice Block is really the worst out of the three, and I would definitely want to see it moved to the Hall of Fame. The archetype that has excited me the most over the past few days has been the new midrange druid. It plays, uh, plays more like the old uh, combo druid uh, back in the Force of Nature Savage Order days. You play the ramp in Wild Growth and My Creeper uh, and still quality cards like Fandral, Nourish, uh, the new Death Knight Malfurion. And then in the late game, due to uh, ultimate infestation, you can play out kind of like a combo deck with uh, Spreading Plague and uh, Stronghold Defender which uh, the playstyle just really speaks to me and is something I find a lot of fun. So that has certainly been my favorite deck. <laughs> Easy question, Aleria. That's it for my first impressions of Nice of the Frozen Throne. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe for more content from Alliance.